<laughs> that works. A lot of you guys said this and said in the comments that, hey, that eye level, you're gonna need a backup. Well, I've got one from Aircraft Automation. So this little guy is actually quite unique and it can do some incredible things. Not only is it a backup EFIS that I can use inside of the airplane, but it can also independently control the autopilot. So I actually don't need this little box from Level to be able to make the autopilot work. In fact, the trim tabs are from aircraft automation and I could hook them up directly to this, but because these guys communicate with each other, I'm just gonna run it the way that I wired it before. Anyways, enough talk here. This guy is working in action and you can see the artificial horizon is working. The compass is all working. I mean, this is a complete unit and this will be perfect as a backup because it has everything that I need should everything else fails, including a battery backup of its own. I'm just really excited about this. This thing is awesome. Now they did provide me with a complete wiring harness for this, but I decided not to use it because this is a lot of wires and I actually only needed five because I was coupling it with the iLevel autopilot already. I really didn't video myself making this harness. I didn't think that you guys would find it interesting, but this is the end result of my efforts. So that I'll just plug in right there. It is only five wires, two of which are power and three are communication between uh, the Super Eco and the iLevel autopilot. Um, the only thing that I really have left to do here is hook up the power properly, shorten these cables and get the dial installed. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, we'll show you how everything works together. That is now grounded over here and hooked up to its circuit breaker down there. So if everything is right, I should be able to come in here, hit the master, which won't do anything, and avionics. <laughs> there we go. See this guy's now online. That is now online. And everything should be lining up. So if I come over here, hit this, let's just say uh, pressure's 3093 for today. Hit apply. We can see over here changed. Oh, and over here changed like crazy as well. That is excellent. And, and it goes both directions. So if I hit this guy and we go down to here, let's change it back to a, a normal state. Oh, this is, gonna, this, this is gonna take me a while. Jeez, uh, nine, two. And we hit that button. You'll see it changed it over here as well. So the eye level is actually feeding the information over here. It says, no GPS because I don't have the GPS antenna hooked up, uh, but everything is functioning the way that it should, and it's incredibly exciting. Now, this is still a failover. Should the eye level fail, instead of grabbing the information from it, it'll use all of its internal information that I was showing you before to be able to provide me the most accurate information possible in an emergency. So, that is now all done. And, <sighs> You know, I should have shown you guys the wiring harness, but uh, oh yeah, let's hook up the static pressure and um, and everything, and uh, yeah, that could be fun. I've never done that before. And here's the kit that I have to be able to do all that. So uh, all of the the things that I need, in including a static port that's going to go on the side of the plane. I do have to order another part to make this work, so we're not going to install that one today. But uh, most of this hosing and these fittings and stuff can be installed. And there we have it. I'm using these Y adapters over here to be able to split it to back over here. Uh, I've got a T line there for the static pressure because that needs to come over to the transponder once it's located here. Over here on the other side, I've got this guy hooked up right here and he comes down around because this is gonna be where I'm putting that static pressure port that I was showing you before. And then once the wings are on, we'll have another line coming down through here that will snake back around and then come through and hook in right there for our uh, pitot tube. So yeah, that was actually easier than I thought it would be. 
Now this is one of those things that I couldn't find much information on. So if I did it wrong, please let me know so I can get it corrected so everything works properly. Guys, I just, I just thought of something. If this is where the pitot tube is supposed to be and I plug in here and then take this end and blow into it, <laughs> that works. That was awesome. And I'm just excited that everything worked. And I'm super excited to have the Super Eco inside of my airplane because it's gonna be a solid backup for what I'm gonna need flying the Red Rocket. Anyways, definitely go and check them out on their website at aircraftautomation.com. They've got this kit, they've got a trim kit, and a couple of other things for you guys to take a look at, but definitely make sure to check them out. That's gonna be it for this video. So guys, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And we're gonna be headed to Osh here in just a little bit, and I hope to see you guys there. Check out uh, the social media posts and everything for where I'm gonna be and what's going on. And uh, yeah, hope to see you. And as always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.